It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, this Ravens team been so successful in recent years, 10 or more wins in four of the last five seasons. What do they need to do to take that next step? Well, the way the Ravens have played for a lot of their franchise history, we know the defense is going to take care of business. They're going to keep you in every ball game. I think on offense, can they throw the ball more proficiently, especially out wide to the receivers? and make plays that way to continue to open up running lanes for a team that we know loves to move the ball along the ground. And meanwhile, for the Houston Texans, the future is now. They take C.J. Stroud out of Ohio State, number two overall, and we will see him get the nod as starter in this one. And <laughs> you and I laugh privately often when teams say, well, we want him to sit and learn. Come on, if you take him that high, play him right away, go ahead and get him started, and we'll see him do exactly that in this one. A man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll earn a couple of tough yards past the 30 to the 31. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Oh, his first throw of the game. Going to be intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the 10-yard line. Time will tell if that's an interception that rattles the rookie here. First drive on the road. And you know the discussion going into the game? Centered on, okay, let's get out nice and easy. Take care of the football. We're on the road. You're a youngster. Let's not make mistakes early. But now the conversation will shift to, okay, put it behind you. Move on. Long way to go in this one. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal to be the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Second and goal from inside the five. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I think he had to load that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Now Jackson. This for Beckham, and he's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Ravens. Four yards on the touchdown, Brown. And the Ravens take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, yeah, I give him credit, found the perfect play call 
quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it's now a 7 nothing game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's OBJ, Odell Beckham, who ends it with a touchdown reception. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Now the interception on that opening drive winds up leading to the touchdown, so now it's kind of time to start over. Yeah, it certainly is, and his first throw of the game, but I like the way his guys rallied around him. Oftentimes, the quarterback is the leader, right? He tells everyone what to do. In this case, I noticed his linemen around him kind of patting him, saying, let's go, big boy. You're still our leader. And this will be a Texans first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. Give every member of that unit a ton of credit for ripping off such a big gain there because you don't get free for that many yards on a counter and misdirection without everybody selling the heck out of it. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10. Ready, go. The second down throw now from Stroud. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Patrick Queen coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. And they went empty backfield, and because of that, nobody was there to pick up the blitz. And you know that offenses, when they go with the empty backfield, they have different things designed on every play to try to account for things. But what people often forget, defense is audible as well. And a lot of times they see an empty backfield, they all go right into a blitzing situation. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. This is taken at the 23. That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That goes for a gain of 31. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? Got caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. And now the throw here is incomplete. And with that, we come to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a second and ten. Now it's Jackson. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. Again, Jackson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Give him credit. 
for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of looking behind it, and that will extend their lead even further. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, et cetera. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. Come on, come on. Hey. Now Stroud. And that is incomplete. Wow, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come down quicker. Because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Patrick Queen, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again, and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Taken right around the 44. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. Gardner like the play call coming right after a tackle for a loss because this is an obvious passing situation. But instead, they fooled him a little bit with the screen, and they wound up getting back what they lost and then a little bit more. Jackson now. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Edwards now on first and 10 to the 27-yard line. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. They'll come up on a second and seven from the 27. They run once more with Edwards. Treads him with a stiff arm. And he's able to motor his way down to his 16-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. That one successful in large 
large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it, and that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Pass on the crossing route is complete. This is Andrews. And the Ravens are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Jackson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Isaiah Likely from four yards out. And the Ravens will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Tucker now for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So that drive seven plays in length. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. Got it. Ready? Let's go. On first down, here's Stroud. And that's complete to Dalton Schultz. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go Ready. until halftime. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Stroud on third down now. Under pressure and they got to him again. Roquan Smith drops him again for the second straight play, and it brings up fourth down. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. The Texans send the punter out as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A little juke. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a terrific first half from the dual threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, coach, thank you very much. As we welcome you back for quarter number three. A very one-sided first half, 17-0 our score as we get going in quarter number three. This fielded right at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Raven offense set to start this third quarter. They have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They start the second half with Hill. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left in no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second down, it's Edwards. 
It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. On third down, Jackson. And this throw will be intercepted. Darren Stingley picks it. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Well, pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And they'll start in great field position, trying to get back into this one. It's first and ten here. Stroud sets up the play action. And he's got Jordan complete right side. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. 30-yard line, second and 12. Play action. Stroud now. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They certainly had a good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. The kick by Fairbairn is good. So kind of disappointing there. I mean, yes, they get the three, but a starting field position like that, three's not what you're banking on. No, and you just have to wonder if you can afford to let chances like that continue to pass you by. You've got to find ways to get the ball to the end zone and put sixes on the scoreboard. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. And now here come the Ravens. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. They certainly thought they had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Here's Jackson. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. And just shedding him off there. And he's going to be out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 54 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Jackson now off the bootleg. And that is going to be incomplete as he let him a bit too much. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. We're in Baltimore. Third quarter action, second and 10. Off the draw, here's Hill. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. 
It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Here is third down and four. Jackson. And that is incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So just three points there, but that important in the grand scheme of things is it's now a three-score lead. And to now, the other guys haven't shown that they can do anything offensively, so just take the points, keep adding that cushion, and let your defense win you the football game. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? A shotgun snap to Stroud. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. And Stroud now to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. It's taken to the 26. It'll be a net of only 30 here. 40-yard punt, 10 on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit and wind it down. But at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. No question that was needed by the defense because they're already trailing by a couple of scores. They had to get off the field without allowing another one. That sack on the first play, that may have derailed this drive. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Jackson's throw pulled in by Aguilar. A good pick up there, 18 yards as they get closer for third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Throwing is Jackson. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. So they're going to come to the line here and it appears try to go for it on fourth. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Derek Stidley picks it, and the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. 
Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Stroud to the air on first and ten. It's coming and down he goes. Michael Pierce in all of his 340-pound glory gets the sack. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to him. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. And this offense on third down today, they're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. This will be third and 15. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. And incomplete on the deep ball. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. It's not. 13, 13. Get up. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on his face. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. Now that's a nice play. Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking at the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, Whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. The Ravens send their punter out now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, We've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests. But in almost all of them, both offenses put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. He gets this one to Mechie. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Here's Stroud. That is caught. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Stroud looking to throw. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. 
Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Here goes Stroud again. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Queen. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful they get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Well, a clear running situation, trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football, so now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. Edwards is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as they'll tackle him at the three. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Defense really sold out there to stop the run. Understandable down near the goal line. Now on second down, you have to wonder, might we see play action here and a flip right over the top? Again, it'll be Edwards. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Third and goal, Jackson. Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. The offense stays out there. A big challenge here from this far back, but they're going for it on fourth and goal. To throw is Jackson. Touchdown! On Al Beckham. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Ravens' decision to go for it pays off with six points. 
And this win now going to look a little more lopsided on the scoreboard, CD. Now, some may have run out the clock in that scenario, but they wanted to put their foot on the gas, get one more touchdown, and they did just that. Well, partner, I would say the traditional is not overly excited about that score. They'd like to see the game played a little bit differently. But what you can't argue with is their execution of that play because it played out exactly as it was drawn up. It almost would have been a shame not to finish with such a well-run play. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 24. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll very wisely take a knee here as they'll bring this one out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So a roughing the passer penalty there, CD. And we know that these pass rushers love to get after rookie quarterbacks, but they've still got to do it within the scope of the rules. And that time, the hit came just a little bit too late. And the official won't even think twice about pulling his flag on that one. 79 Broncos. Stroud now on first and 10. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Second and ten. Here's Stroud. He finds his target. It's Schultz. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. On first down, here's Stroud. Now throw out wide, going to be incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Here's second and ten. Second and ten, Stroud to throw yet again here. He's got his man, Schultz, coming across the formation. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. This has been a rough one, to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. One final shot for C.J. Stroud. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Robert Woods, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Texans are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. A well-executed series that's really established some confidence in him to run this offense. And they can't connect incomplete, but that stops the clock with one tick remaining here in this first half. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. So that last kickoff, just a mere formality, obviously, Charles, and wrapping up a game that they should be very happy about in which they got the win. Yeah, I thought they were clearly the better team by the end, and they earned this one with a terrific game plan and consistent effort throughout. Only fitting that they had the ball when the clock hit zero.
So that'll do it.